Well, look, I'll tell you one story in piece of speculation that's been uh, getting a bit of play this week is the idea that the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern may well resign her position prior to the next general election and go and do something else. There are people, and most Prime Ministers of recent times have polarised people in support, and Jacinda Ardern is no exception to that. She gets told, uh, she gets called childish and, and immature names that I don't think are appropriate. And people that would seem to me either love her or hate her, though I am ambiguous. She is the Prime Minister. We respect the position. And as a journalist, you critique her uh, performance. But the person who kicked off what a lot of commentators privately have been saying was always going to be a story. The person who kicked this off with the column speculating on it um, was Bryce Edwards from the Democracy the Democracy Project. Oh, so close to Disinformation Project. We must talk about the branding. Um, but Bryce, who, as I said, kicked this particular hornet's nest, uh, he joins us on the line now. Bryce, lovely to have you with us, mate. Oh, you couldn't, boy, resi- boy. You couldn't resist, eh? All the rest oh, of us point. sit there go, oh, no, we won't write, write yet. We will wait till next year to write about the possibility of Jacinda standing down. And you just say, oh, no, it's a quiet week. There I go. Yeah, I wrote a column, put it out on, I think it was Tuesday. I didn't really think it was a big deal. I was just talking about the, the very real possibility that a Prime Minister might be beyond her Use by date, yep. sell by date, and um, you know this happens with all politicians, all political leaders, all prime ministers. Eventually, they step down. Hubris, and, you know, hubris uh, comes along, bites you on the bum. Happened to Helen Clark. John Key jumped before he was pushed, didn't he? He, he did, and uh, he caught everyone by surprise. And I don't know if uh, Jacinda Ardern is going to catch us by surprise. I think the signs are already there that she's on her decline. And I don't think she'll want to wait round and be heavily defeated at um, maybe next election or have to go into coalition with Winston Peters and tomorrow. Winston won't go into coalition with her, or that's what he's told me, Bryce. Um, Well, yeah. But she doesn't want to be the leader of the opposition. No, she she doesn't. So Okay. uh, And she's been through a lot. She's been through a lot. Oh, God. um, Okay. Have we got violence? Have we got any violence on <laughs> on her hand? What do you mean she's been through a lot? She's been the Prime she, Minister. The Prime Minister always goes through a lot, Bryce. It's part of the job. Yeah, but she's had a few crises to deal with that uh, have been uh, probably keeping her awake at night. Well, OK. So uh, what did, what did uh, John Key have? Oh, yeah, earthquakes, Pike River. They yeah, all they, have it, mate. They, it's part of the territory. Yeah. And it makes them a bit older and wearier and no one would begrudge anyone stepping down after five years of having to run the country. Cry and me so a river. I, Cry me a yeah. river, Bryce. <laughs> um, Indeed. But look, look, are there look, any actual signs from here that this is a possibility? I, I don't think so, and they never normally are. I mean, and politicians are always going to deny they step down until they actually do. Um, and, you know, John Key was the same. Um, no one, you know, even in his inner circle, <laughs> very few of them knew he was going to step down until he did. Yeah. So it's not like um, she's going to be announcing it or hinting at it. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that she will be stepping down. I just think there's a decision she will be mulling over mm. and um, she'll be looking at the pros and cons. And at this stage, you know, you don't want to go down with a sinking ship. Um, no. You know, she's still got a very good reputation for some of the things she And, of seen. course, her critics would say she's got a job lined up at the United Nations like Helen Clark had. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, she's probably got a huge number of opportunities. Um, I mean, the, the head of the UN doesn't come up, that role doesn't come up until, I don't know, what, 2026. Yeah. Oh, my, my bet is she's going to be setting up something like the Jacinda Ardern Foundation. For on, and for, be, well, you know, I, yeah, and I wonder, actually, if her future isn't in the highly questionable, um, you know, hate speech, um, hunting yep. so-called extremists online area, that that's where she's going to... Um, Indeed. You know. And so she'll set up a foundation. Um, this will be a global one where she, yeah, pursues oh those... Oh, my God, so like those idiots from, from the Disinformation Project get even more power. 
Well, that's kind of the zeitgeist for the kind of liberal left at the moment is this idea of fear about all the bad things happening, such as the far right yeah. and the peddling of conspiracy theories. Well, yeah. You know, it, incels. Of, incels um, are the latest thing. Incels are the new yeah. bogeymen or bogey boys, I guess we'd call them. Well, we? authorities always have a need to create bogeymen or bogey people, <laughs> if you want yeah. to call them that. Um, and so uh, I, I think the next election, presuming that Ardern is, is going to be the leader, is going to be fought. Well, the incumbents will want to fight it on fear. And it's always a good um, theme for incumbents to sort of, you know, point out how much danger is out there and how you want to keep with the status quo, you want to keep with the incumbents who can, you know, have a steady hand. And so they will, you know, want to ramp up fears about disinformation, conspiracy theories, the far right, foreign governments, uh, you know, and it it could play well to their hands and it will play into the idea that maybe national act are dangerous and we can't really take a risk by allowing them back into having control. And I think that's the best bet for um, for Labour to, to, to stay in power, basically. Yeah, yeah. Bryce, question here. Even if she were to win the next election, do you think, and you talked at the very opening of this discussion about how all politicians have their day in the sun and then inevitably time comes for them, right? Um, and it's time to go. Do you think Jacinda Ardern, if she were to win the next election, would stay full term? Well, that's the that's the difficult question for politicians because, mm. yeah, that would be three terms, and um, you know, you, whatever you do, you can't just leave politics at the election. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you have to l- allow some time for your um, successor to take over. So she could only be there for the full term if she wants to go for a fourth term. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, it's always a complex one. Tony Blair had that problem. Uh, All lots of politicians have it. And John Key quite rightly stood down in the year before uh, the 2017 election to give Bill English, you know, a decent run. And so, yeah, and that's why I think we're talking about Ardern um, or the speculation at the moment is if she was to let Grant Robertson take over. She can't. And Grant do it, is you know, the guy. You say can. Grant's the heir apparent, not Woodhouse or Hipkins. Yeah. Um, oh, he, he's certainly my pick. I, I think he's a very talented politician and um, very close friend of Jacinda Ardern. He's wanted it before. I'm sure he wants it now. He's very ambitious. Let's not forget. Yes, he did run to be leader of the Labour Party back in what 2013. Um, and he had Jacinda Ardern as his uh, his 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 um, running mate in that election, but he lost it. Um, no, I think he's still got unfinished business, and he's probably Labor's best bet to win next year's election if Ardern isn't isn't the person leading things. Okay, if you were a betting man, which I suspect you're not, Bryce, because you have responsibilities yep. and you're a man of sober <laughs> habits and clean living. Um, <laughs> Um, no, I'm not. I'm not putting my house on. Uh, yeah. Going. If that's okay, but what? Well, okay. Look, uh, look, look. Okay, a lunch. Well, no, because I think she probably will hold on. Okay. I think she'll probably stay on. You I naughty man! <laughs> so you write this column, gets you tons of attention, and then you come on four days, three days later, and you <laughs> say, "Well, probably not going to happen. Actually, I was just having a look, crack, Nigel." Yeah, I think it's an interesting and it's an important issue. Yeah, you know, um, will she stand down? You know, um, and there's nothing wrong with speculating about that or discussing it. And there's people have put forward a lot of arguments, you know, to say that she won't. I mean, she's um, why would she step down now when um, you know she's got so much power and she's got so much responsibility? And if she left now, it really would leave Labour in the lurch, you know. Yeah, and she's a responsible sort of. Labour Party politician. Is she? Is so, she? Well, she, I think she cares about her party. Mm. You know, All she right. She cares about the future of, of Labour. She wouldn't want to make things worse for Labour. Well, maybe she's thinking about this as she steers out across the um, expanse of ice down in Antarctica. Maybe this is uh, time for some Jacinda time to think about the future. Hey, Bryce, while I've got you here, we've had an interesting week and it's ongoing trying to get some answers or understand 
about an outfit called the Disinformation Project. Uh, and as I said, the Democracy Project and Disin not not dissimilar names. <laughs> uh, I know who you Probably are, uh, <laughs> and I know what you do, and you'll come on this program. The Disinformation Project are uh, holding two seminars, one in Auckland and one in Wellington next year, uh, next month, for specifically invited news media. And let's just say the platform is specifically uninvited. Um, Martin Bradbury, who I think you'd agree is a writer and, and, and journalist, he's been told that the Auckland um, event is full. What do you know about the Disinformation Project and, and the people behind it and its connection to the Prime Minister and the government? Oh, look, I'm a bit embarrassed to say I don't know a lot. Um, I followed the, the project a little bit and I don't really find a lot of their work very rigorous. Um, it's, you know, I think they feel that, like they're on the right side of history and all they have to do is point out that there's all these horrible things going on and um, to me it's not a particularly sort of academic venture. Um, it's kind of more of a moral crusade. And, okay, well, they're uh, based at universities, though it seems to me, then, and, and they've told me they're not paid by the universities. I understand they have input into cabinet committees or into the Prime Minister's office. Do you think yeah, we, we, we deserve to know more about who funds them and who they're accountable to, given that they get such an uncritical um, run, too, in legacy or mainstream media? Oh, of course, that, that's a no-brainer. Um, and if they're not up front, <laughs> yeah, of course they need to be, definitely. Um, and they, they certainly are part of the, the zeitgeist, I think, of um, you know this current government. Um, so, you know, connections between those in power, i.e. the current government, and those that are yeah, giving them advice is absolutely essential in a democracy. So, so yes, that's... Uh, I think you're on to a, a good question there. Okay. And, Bryce, so, so just for the record, you don't actually think Jacinda Ardern will resign prior to the next election, but you're saying it's a possibility worth thinking about. Oh, absolutely. Look, I don't know it's going to happen, um, but, you know, there's, there's a very good chance it will. That's all I could really say. All right. Bryce, always lovely talking to you, mate. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much you for your time today. That is Bryce Edwards from the Democracy uh, Project. There he goes. He, he kicks it off and then by Friday... Oh, no, not, not so much.